use your light to go towards the direction. He's a superstar of the Muslim world. Don't forget to tell the people you love. His lectures draw rock concert sized crowds, and his TV debates are prime time events. Tarek Ramadan is perhaps the most famous Muslim intellectual alive today. Many see him as an eloquent, charismatic defender of the faith, as at ease reciting the Quran as he is sticking it to the establishment on issues like the hijab ban and confronting the far right. So how did this modern day superstar preacher go from teaching religion at Oxford to this jail in the south of Paris? In 2016, a woman called Henda Ayari published a book about her life. In it, she described her transition from hyper-conservative Muslim to secular liberal. But what was most interesting was her claim that she'd been sexually assaulted by a famous Muslim figure back in March 2012. Now, initially, she refused to name him and the story died down until October last year, when this happened. Me Too movement, Me Too movement. In the Me Too movement. Famous men everywhere started being accused of sexual abuse, and not just in Hollywood. J'imaginais, alors je m'étais tout vraiment idéalisé, j'idéalisais beaucoup Tariq Ramadan. Je, pour moi, c'était comme un grand frère, comme un homme, voilà, c'était un homme religieux, un homme, euh, je, voilà, il avait, oh, j'y allais en toute confiance. Now Miss Ayari was saying it out loud. The man she was talking about was Tariq Ramadan. Il s'est littéralement jeté sur moi comme une bête sauvage. Plus je disais non, et plus il s'est mis en colère. Et en fait, il m'a frappé très violemment. Il m'a giflé très fort. Ensuite, il m'a, il m'a étranglé. Donc, pendant plusieurs secondes, j'avais le souffle coupé. J'ai vraiment cru mourir, vraiment. Et là, il m'a, il m'a violé. Gradually, more women started to come forward, and their allegations sounded similar. They claim Professor Ramadan made contact with them over social media, that they'd begun some sort of a relationship, and that he then assaulted them. I contacted one of them, Munya Habouj, who Tariq Ramadan has admitted having a relationship with. She alleges he sexually assaulted her. He was a public personality who never spoke to me about religion. For me, back then, he was the complete opposite of what he preached. I went to Paris to speak to the lawyer for another accuser who goes by the name of Christelle to protect her identity. She alleges that Professor Ramadan raped her in a hotel room in Lyon in 2009. On passe à côté de ce dossier si on passe à côté de l'emprise. Euh, elle est fraîchement convertie, elle a, elle a cette, cette foi brûlante des, des, des personnes récemment converties. Et donc, lorsque Tariq Ramadan lui parle, elle, elle le dit d'ailleurs. Moi, c'est comme si un imam me parlait. Et donc, euh, petit à petit, il rentre dans sa vie, voilà. dans sa vie intime, dans sa vie religieuse, dans, dans sa vie de femme. Professor Ramadan has strongly denied all accusations of sexual assault. And in February this year, he went to a police station voluntarily to answer questions. He was immediately arrested and charged with two counts of rape. And he's been in pretrial detention since. Now, this is where the story gets more complicated. His family say Professor Ramadan has been in solitary confinement for much of the last six months, that his health is failing, and that for the first 45 days, they weren't allowed contact with him. Do you feel that this is a politically motivated campaign against your father? So many things in this case are not being respected, but what we know is my dad's role in the political scene in France uh, and his role in the debate about Islam in France, about uh, identity in France, about all of these things. And I think once you put these two together, it becomes obvious, at least to us, that it does not respond to judicial norms and is therefore motivated by other reasons which we feel are political. There's a growing campaign to ensure Tariq Ramadan gets fair treatment. These are some of the high-profile figures who've put their name to an open letter. It is not for us to judge Tariq Ramadan's guilt or innocence, but we respectfully ask, has Mr. Ramadan benefited from a fair and equitable legal process, one in which he is presumed innocent until proven guilty? Is there one form of justice for Muslims in France and another for everyone else? 
We asked the prosecutor's office whether Professor Ramadan's treatment was in any way exceptional and received this reply. The expert has declared that his state of health is compatible with his detention. Mr. Ramadan himself does of course have access to this file in conformity with the rules of the penal code. Judges haven't decided whether the case will even go to trial, but many feel the trial has already begun in the media. Much of that has played out online and some of it has turned ugly. Take a look at Hendayari's Facebook page. And the abuse has spilled out into the real world too. One accuser said she was strangled and had liquid thrown in her face. The harassment got so bad that Professor Ramadan issued this plea before he was detained. À tous ceux qui ont pu répondre pour me défendre avec de l'insulte ou avec... Non, nous n'entrons pas dans cela. L'insulte, ça ne peut pas être. La menace, le rejet, ça ne doit pas être notre façon de réagir à tout ceci. What you have to remember is that Professor Ramadan is a married father of four and he's now admitted to having extramarital affairs with several women. This was a man with a squeaky clean image who lectured on how to live as a good Muslim and that definitely means no sex outside of marriage. And this is to be a believer. Do you think your father has done anything wrong? I think every human being does things that are wrong. So uh, yes, I know my dad has made mistakes the same way I've made mistakes, the same way every human being has made mistakes. But this is not what this story is about. This story is not about a mistake, it's about a crime. And I believe that he did not commit this crime. Here in France, uh, he was This is a case that has gripped France. The debate it sparked touches on some of the country's most divisive issues, feminism, racism, Islamophobia. But against the backdrop of Me Too, it's also a story that's become all too familiar. A story of allegations of abuse of male power, the boundaries of consent, and the harassment of accusers. Whatever the outcome of the case, its implications will be felt far beyond those directly involved. Miriam Francois, BBC News, Paris.